I am pleased to introduce Dan Cohen. He is a social worker like me, um, so I find that really amazing, and is also the founding executive director of Music and Memory. He combines an extensive background in high-tech training, corporate sales, and software applications with social work, specializing in vocational rehabilitation and community service organizing. He's a former consultant and trainer for the U.S. Department of Education. He helped colleges, universities, and communities nationwide to apply best practices in community service learning programs. And with that, I will turn it over to Dan. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, glad, glad to be here. Um, so I'm going to start right off. Well, should we start off with um, Andrea? Yes. And vote, maybe? Um, and then we can uh, go from there. Excellent. And Andrea, just tell us um, your name and who you work for and your role, um, and, then, and then you can jump into your story. Uh, my name is Andrea Andrade. I'm a recreational therapist at the New Jewish Home. And I am currently in charge of our version of the music and memory and all the technology programs we have here. Um, so I will give you a quick story um, that we have with one of our elders. Um, so Miriam is an 89-year-old uh, long-term elder who was born in Belgium and lived most of her adult life in New York City. Uh, she's a widow and her sons visit often. Miriam was an artist and she especially loved to paint. Uh, when she first came to the nursing home, the re recreation staff encouraged her to participate in art groups or individual art therapies as well as her family, but she always refused. Uh, Miriam also experienced a physical and cognitive decline um, during the months of year, uh, and after which she was prone to um, getting up of her wheelchair, putting herself at risk for falls. Uh, so staff members attempted to redirect this behavior by offering her favorite foods or engaging her in activities. Unfortunately, these were only short-term solutions that were not always successful. Um, so at a family meeting, uh, where one of Miriam's sons was present, the team learned uh, of Miriam's love for music and fashion. Uh, the team decided that Miriam will be uh, a great candidate to participate in our music and memory program to decrease her behavior and increase her ability to participate in recreation activities. Miriam was given an iPad loaded with her favorite music and also with the speakers um, so she could listen to her music in her room Anytime uh, her music is playing, you'll find her smiling, singing, and dancing. Uh, the music also uh, rekindled her love for art. While her music is playing, um, she will draw, sketch, paint, or color. So Miriam, son, and the family are so grateful for her music, for the music that has brought back the joy to her life. Well, that's, that's great, Andrea. You know, it's really funny. What, what we're learning about music that is uh, sort of favorites for people. Um, Angel Duncan is a uh, creative arts therapist uh, down south, and she developed sort of the standard art uh, watercolor program for a lot of the Alzheimer's chapters in the country. And 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 she said, you know, typically someone with dementia, as they decline, uh, even if they're enthusiastic doing watercolors at some point they just put down the paintbrush and they just aren't able to do it anymore um, and she's always had music in the background it's just making a good environment to sort of uh, be creative um, but you know at some point that sort of doesn't work either um, so what she did with a couple of people who had stopped like six or eight months ago uh, from their painting is she made up a playlist and she put on their headphones as they sat in front of the uh, you know, piece of paper and, and uh, with the watercolors and they each picked up their paint brushes and picked up where they left off. Um, and so what we're finding is the music is really powerful uh, as a sort of a precursor, as a sort of a, uh, uh, a way to spark um, sort of the next step, whatever that is, whether it's group activity or eating or going somewhere or, um, you know, just great uh, way to resist, reduce uh, resistance to care um, and to just uh, encourage, you um, um, a more outward demeanor and, and more, more willing uh, and able 
uh, to interact. So this is a picture of Henry. Uh, many of you have seen this. Um, it, it is the most viewed um, video on dementia globally at 56 million views. Um, and it really just speaks to uh, sort of the, the power of music. I mean, here's a guy who was in a, in a great nursing home in New York, uh, but spent his day, you know, with his head, head down. Um, but, you know, only when he got his Cab Calloway, which nobody really thought to give him, give him uh, not only did he awake, but he was really very eloquent in his speech. Uh, and that was total, um, totally unexpected. Uh, and he had his iPod and his music for four years, uh, and it helped him maintain his, uh, sort of maximize his ability to interact. Um, you know, after four years he passed away, but his physical still went, to, it ran its own course, but his, his, um, uh, his cognition uh, in, in some ways was uh, kind of maintained a little bit more. Everybody has their own path of decline, uh, but that's, that's what happened with him. Uh, so what, what is music fit in, in all of this? And I, and I just went to the Pioneer Network's website and sort of their definition of culture change and everything. And a, a key goal of culture change, I'm just going to read this quickly, is for elders to feel at home wherever they live. Now, you know this. You are the greenhouse. You are the maker of this um, as a standard um, of care. And this includes creating living spaces that allow for privacy, comfort, and personalization. It also includes the development of meaningful relationships among people, sharing living environments in between these individuals and care partners who provide assistance and support. So, you know, music is just one more tool for you, um, and you already know that, uh, but it's the personalizing aspect of the music uh, that makes a, a very significant difference. Um, the, um, uh, if, if you were to... Say, think of your favorite genre of music. Um, later on, um, with your fellow staff or at home with family, and and just ask them, um, well, what's um, you know, here's my favorite genre of music. I want you to guess my top favorite songs. Um, you know, are they going to be able to guess them? Um, you know, if you guess five musicians or groups that you love more than any others, um, and and you know, are they going to guess all five? No, four, no, three. Maybe two, maybe one, maybe, but but the, the point here is that typically, and this is with our family and people who really know us, and for those who we're now um, caring for, who we don't have direct connection with um, what they loved when they were younger, uh, we're not going to know. Uh, and so when we put on music, I mean, Al Power would say, uh, and Al Power's on Music and Memories Medical Advisory Board, and, and he'd say, you know, music the way it's typically been used in long-term care and just every kind of facility is, is it plays uh, sort of that 50 song loop of uh, you know Frank Sinatra type music and that just becomes background noise to, to uh, individuals um, and so the goal here is to really take advantage and leverage the our ability technologically and and you know without any real cost any significant cost to give people the same music that we choose you know we, we control what we listen to when we listen to it um, as best we can um, and so the goal here is not a change from what we've been doing best practice you know give them a genre of music oh give them big band let's play some jazz um, and you know that is um, you know for me I remember when showing my age when when a, for, when in a jet and and they had for music they didn't have you know screens uh, they just had a choice of you know 60s music or 70s or country or this or that and whatever genre I went to I, I didn't like any of the music um, so that's kind of what we want to get away from um, and, uh, and to totally personalize so so the goal of music and memory as many of you know is to really generate these personalized playlists um, you know sometimes people default to a genre oh this person's Spanish we'll, we'll give them some Spanish music or this person's a veteran we'll just play patriotic music and and we may get some songs that are good and, and for some people putting those headphones on is uh, is a plus um, but uh, but we're missing out on that that big um, sort of um, uh, ability to really connect deeply with someone's uh, long-term memories and their emotional system in terms of uh, music that holds personal meaning um, there was someone who came over from um, the UK probably six years ago now as, as, a, as a Churchill fellow and her job uh, or her assignment or choice was to come to the US and spend 10 weeks uh, visiting the best uh, programs in the US in terms of um, um, so creative arts and, and dementia um, and she visited you know MoMA and time slips and, and, and the results of her her travels around the US 
was, yeah, we, we have a lot of great programs. She said, but, but with 40% of the people with dementia having more advanced dementia, and with advanced dementia, uh, personally meaningful activity is rare or non-existent in most settings. Um, and, and the only way to reach people and scale it um, is with digitized recorded music that people love. Um, and so that way we could reach millions of people. Uh, people could do it at home. They could do it in any setting. Um, and, uh, and that would be a big win. So that's the, uh, the goal. Um, so the, the second story, um, should I read this, Rachel, or do you want to, or the San Mount Santa? Um, go ahead. Okay, so yeah. this is a story uh, Rachel uh, provided or from uh, Mount San Antonio Gardens. I don't know, what state is that in? It is in California. Okay. Uh, Miss P and her and Father J uh, both reside at Mount San Antonio Gardens and are living with dementia. Uh, both come from religious backgrounds. Miss P as an active member of a Roman Catholic parish and Father J as a retired minister. Miss P often wanders into the into into other elders' rooms, and Father J has a tendency to break out in aggressive acts against other residents and staff. The Shabazim, the activities director, and I met to strategize and and to strategize how best to meet the needs being expressed by these behaviors in loving and supportive ways. Although we've been using music in memory for several years, neither of these residents seemed interested in sitting and listening to music. As an experiment, we produced playlists for both residents based entire, almost entirely on rituals from their religious, from their respective religious backgrounds. Now Ms. P cruises around the house reciting the rosary with exuberance and Father J leads his unseen congregation in the liturgy of the religious tradition with chants and prayers. Both strategies have resulted in a real sense of joy within these elders and gratitude from the staff who are able to better understand and appreciate the rich lives these elders uh, had led. Um, so it's sort of going um, um, from a Mount San Antonio Gardens, they said, going just a little beyond conventional thinking, uh, as we're encouraged to do in Greenhouse, I put smiles on all our, our faces. Um, so yeah, it could be something like uh, there was one 83 year old woman who couldn't figure out what she liked, but it turned out she really loved the Eagles because that's what she listened to her kids with at home. So it's, it's not necessarily kind of what you think. Um, so, you know, finding old music uh, is, is you used to love is like getting back in touch with an old friend and um, you know it's a funky cartoon but it but it's really just so so true how um, it, it, it is really different for people who are struggling my, my father has advanced dementia and then I have a tough time um, you know changing his his mood um, and he's in the you know 97 percent statistic show of people really can be affected by music positively their brain you know activity changes three percent have no change and my father's in that three percent so i can't use music with him but um but it works with with everybody else to to, to varying degrees um so here are a couple of quotes uh, i want to read from nursing directors so this is really you know people think of this as a as a this is an activities program and and we'll give it to activities to do because we like this and and that is um you know, n not the best recipe for success. It's no, no, no negative reflection on activities. It's just that this is an opportunity for everybody to um, be involved, benefit, contribute. Uh, everybody wins. Um, but anyway, and and then we really view this as a as a kind of nursing intervention uh, as well. Um, so Gary was prone um, to falls uh, and was the first resident to participate in our music and memory program. The staff wanted to see if personalized music could help reduce Gary's number of falls. Prior interventions included the basics, standby assist, prompt, engaging at certain times of day, pain management, medication changes, different shoes, and walker training. The results, he had 13 falls in 2013, uh, 14 falls uh, in the next year in 2014. In 2015, he had two falls uh, prior to implement uh, two falls. The quote is actually backwards here. And in 2016, zero falls. So, so he, he went from 14 falls to two falls and then no falls. Um, and and this is not uncommon. Um, the, that's from um, in Can from Kansas. Uh, another quote from a um, a nursing home in uh, Utah uh, from the director of nursing staff. Love it. If you don't have everyone on board, it won't work. Uh, from the administration to the aides, everyone was so excited to try it and they could see how it was working. Um, so this is, you know, sort of keys to success here are total buy-in. 
management, everybody, um, and uh, and and really working together um, as you do, you know, in a, in a smaller setting, uh, interdisciplinary team is just the nature of what you do. Um, and so, you know, here, if you wanted to do with someone the uh, little sort of question that I mentioned before in terms of, you know, what genre of music do you like, and then list your top five favorites, uh, and then turn and have them guess. Um, and, and, you know, the bottom line from that, and I've done this with sort of groups of people, and very few people are able to figure out many songs at all, um, is that, you know, what would you, if you, what if you had to listen to somebody else's favorite music, or what if people gave you, you know, music you didn't want to listen to? We had in um, uh, North Carolina, um, there was a 700 seat theater, they filled it up with people watching Alive Inside uh, about music and memory, and the front two rows were uh, residents from a local assisted living community and um, and that was great they saw it and some of them had some dementia you know whatever um, and a few weeks later I talked to one of the sort of sponsors of the screening and I said well how did it go with the folks from the um, assisted living community and they said you know they went right back uh, and they told staff they said I want to make up the playlist right away because when I decline I don't want anybody putting on that music that I hate um, and so it's sort of like you know, they know it's coming uh, for many of them, and they really um, were worried about having the wrong stuff being played. So music and memory, I mean, I started this just by myself as a volunteer, um, and it, it's now running um, you know, in 4,500 um, different care settings, uh, mostly um, skilled facilities and assisted living, uh, but also many hospices and hospitals, uh, adult day programs, uh, home care programs. Um, you know, every state in the U.S., all across Canada, more than 100 in Australia, um, um, and uh, 10, 10 countries altogether, um, because everybody's got the same same challenges. Um, and this is his different quotes on it. And um, you know, Brenda Gallant, uh, the nurse uh, uh, executive director of Maine's uh, ombudsman program, said, "Music and memory is one of the best projects we've ever done." Um, uh, in Louisiana, the Department of Health, Music and Memory is one of the most effective programs I've seen in my 20 plus careers. And so, and, and there's more. My point with that is just, we don't really have a lot of good tools. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there are many things we can do, um, you know, best practice, but to really move people to another place, you know, it's tough to get really transformation. Um, and so this is just a way, uh, a tool that you know, it, it won't work if we can't figure out what, what music holds meaning for someone, but it, but it often will if we can. So that means, you know, the hardest part of this is really um, investigating and finding out, well, what music does really hold personal meaning for, for them? I mean, if, if you were to land in, in, in a hospital and, and somebody said, yeah, we want to give you your music and you weren't able to tell them, how the heck are they going to know? You know, they're not going to know and they're not going to be able to guess. Um, and this is why we also, we tell the community whenever I speak at Alzheimer's conferences and caregivers and stuff, is everybody should have their playlist done. You know, technically it's not easy to do this. You need help, maybe your kids, your grandkids. Uh, but once everybody has their playlist and they understand the power of having their own music in one place, then they're more likely to set it up for their um, elders. And once their elders have it, then when they come to you, um, they come through the door with the device maybe, or just the playlist, and, and then it saves you all of that time and, and that transition uh, period that can be difficult for some people um, becomes a lot easier. And so this is how, so 20, even though it's running at facilities in all 50 states, 24 states so far have made music and memory public policy. So what that means, departments of health have said, you know, it is our goal to bring this to every person um, in a skilled uh, facility um, and beyond. Um, that everybody should have access to their music if it will benefit them. Um, and so that's what's going on. And we'll talk a little bit later about how that's funded and how you can tie into that. But but those those are the those are the states, and we've just added New Hampshire, a state of Washington, um, and. Um, uh, a couple of others are, are coming. Um, so how's it being utilized? So we talk a lot about dementia, um, but it's really, there are many uh, ways it's really being utilized. I mean, it's kind of amazing. In Texas, um, they're using it with all 3,000 uh, individuals living in, in their 13 um, state-supported living centers. So these are centers for, their, for everyone in Texas with uh, 
who requires housing who have uh, intellectual or developmental disabilities. Um, they've just made it a standard because they did it in one in Austin Center. It was such a success in changing behavior and engaging people, which is their goal, um, that they just everybody gets it. Um, the uh, caregiving, um, it's really interesting in terms of reducing caregiver stress. Um, we'll talk, I'm going to talk more about the research uh, as we go on. Uh, but in Toronto, where they're, um, because of the impact of this, they're actually giving away 10,000 iPods. Anybody who's diagnosed with dementia, and who's a resident of the city of Toronto, they'll just give them a free iPod and they'll load it up with music and they'll help them. Um, and so the, uh, when they measured results in the first 500 families that got it, uh, they found not only to use the Cornell Depression and Dementia Scale and a caregiver distress scale, um, and they found, yes, it was good for the individual with the disease, but it was really significantly helpful for people to reduce their stress. It, it almost allows for an in-home respite. Um, you know, people, families can leave their um, loved one for 20 minutes without worrying they're going to, you know, walk out the door, get in trouble in the kitchen and stuff. And, and so it's, they really, really appreciate that. Um, and it also allows people to sit maybe both with headphones on or just listening to music together. Um, and so it's just, and it, what they found also in Toronto, 90% of these um, people that got the free iPods lived at home, but 10% lived in various um, health care organizations in, uh, in Toronto. And they found, they also measured a, 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 the same increase in caregiver confidence, whether it was a, um, a, a nursing uh, assistant in Toronto um, or uh, in a facility or a spouse at home, which was kind of odd. You'd think you, maybe for a spouse it would really be good at increasing spouse confidence, but somehow it also increased equally uh, confidence of the, um, um, the nursing assistant. They call it something different. Um, and so do you. Um, and that, that, that caregiver uh, um, uh, research was replicated uh, in Wisconsin with people at home, and they also had like this 50% decrease in caregiver stress. So you know, I'm jumping up and down so people that are sort of the caregiver uh, thought leaders uh, will, will act on this. Um, they really haven't yet, uh, but we'll, 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 we'll get there. Um, uh, TBI, and some of these things we really like to work with music therapists. Um, so, you know, music and memory in all of our facilities probably have over 100 board certified music therapists that already happen to be there. Um, and so it's been a, just great working with them. And so if, I, I mean, I know you don't have music therapists necessarily, unless that's somebody's background, uh, working in a greenhouse environment, but, uh, but they can be really helpful, um, uh, especially when it comes to stroke, TBI, or PTSD. Um, uh, okay, so oh, choking, we'll talk about that. Well, I'll talk about it now. So in, in Wisconsin, one of the nursing homes um, measured uh, what would happen if they used music for people who had swallowing difficulties, and they were kind of amazed at the results um, in terms of somehow people are better able to orchestrate the swallow. Um, and then they, Wisconsin, and maybe there's some Wisconsin folks on this call, um, Wisconsin Department of Health actually um, um, held a conference call with all the nursing homes in the state and had Columbia Healthcare talk about this. And the Department of Health said, everybody should do this. If you, you know, you're giving them music. This is not, you know, you don't need a 10 study, 10 year study to see, should you do this? You're playing music. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and it worked either giving music right before eating or during I mean, and other people who are sort of highly anxious, sometimes you give them music, and it's not necessarily music that's just really calming. How am I doing on time? I'm go quicker. Um, okay, some of the research. So uh, Brown University did a uh, multivariate analysis, meaning they looked at 98 nursing homes running music and memory against uh, a matched pair of another 98 homes, not. Um, and they came up with statistically significant uh, results in terms of both reductions in antipsychotic meds and reduction in behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia. Um, and so, you know, pretty excited about that. Um, they actually, last week, um, they just got awarded a $3.7 million grant from the National Institute on Aging uh, to study music and memory more extensively, a five-year study. Um, they're going to look at um, just lots of people in 60 homes and four chains, and a uh, lot's going to go on there. I talked about Toronto. Uh, so the International Journal, Journal of Neuro Neurorehabilitation um, took a look at the uh, one of the large hospitals it's in New York. Uh, they have an 800-bed um, sort of specialty hospital, uh, skilled facility. And uh, I'm sorry, it's 800-bed hospital and 100-bed 
uh, advanced dementia um, unit, I guess that's what we'll call it. Um, and uh, and they track those those 100 persons with uh, advanced dementia. Um, and they they use a very uh, kind of more holistic. That yes, they use music and memory, and the, the staff was really you know um, you know given more time to spend with with the. The residents, the patients there, um, and and they measured pretty dramatic results. I'm not going to show it today, but in terms of falls reduction, fights reduction, uh, in terms of antipsychotic reduction, um, I mean the, the fights went to zero. I mean it's it's a it's a city hospital with a sort of safety net hospital, but um, but they would uh, when I went in there once, they said, well, Dan, what do you notice? And I said, well. It's pretty quiet. I didn't see anybody listening to music. They said, yeah, they give people the music for an hour in the morning and they're good for the day. Um, so, you know, you know, this is sort of speaking to residual uh, impact. And we're gonna, I got another slide on that. Um, New York State Department of Health actually 10 years ago um, said, you know, they recommended to all 650 nursing homes in New York that they use individualized music based on evidence-based practice that they reference. So it's not like, you know, this research is new in a sense. Uh, Ohio Department of Aging, Duke, um, UC Davis in California, they have a big grant uh, that's uh, in its last year studying a 300 home nursing home rollout um, and uh, we're waiting for those results. A uh, couple of administrator quotes uh, in my 27 years as administrator, nothing's uh, had the same positive impact, my re residents with dementia. Um, and uh, okay, so um, positive outcomes. Um, Residual effect. So, you know, so this means residual, a reduction in challenging verbal and, and or physical behaviors, a reduction in, in anxiety or nervousness. Uh, these are the big ones, positive changes in mood. You know, this is really bottom line, all about giving people pleasure. Um, and um, that's really it. So, you know, everything else I say is kind of not as important as giving people just, um, you know, a good time and, and having them feel good. Um, and, and that's what music will, will often do. Um, and so the other big thing we found, the feedback from the field, everybody running this, is in the world of uh, the degree of communication, how, how the degree to which people are able to both um, increase their ability to communicate their needs uh, and their ability to understand uh, what's going on around them. Uh, and so that's um, just been a real delight. Um, and so, you know, that means sometimes people who are mumbling become articulate, you know, so, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, medial frontal, prefrontal cortex. So, you know, last to go. I mean, this is really the part of the brain, and this is why, you know, music um, just is there till uh, as people um, pass. Um, and that's why, even if somebody's just totally non responsive, end of life, um, they can still probably hear the music that you play. So, um, um, in uh, Denise in uh, Alive Inside, um, I mean, uh, bipolar schizophrenia, but she said, look, when I die, I want to pass to Puff the Magic Dragon. I mean, so, you know, some people can just know this and can set it up. Um, okay. So here's a, a home in uh, Tennessee. Um, and these four women, they're all listening. Well, let me see, three of them and the staff person are there, um, um, really all just having a good time with each other. Uh, and there are just many different models of this. Yes, you can have people listening to their own music together, um, but they can also share the music. Oh, this is my favorite music, or you have two people that love the same music and have them sort of share the music, or, um, you know, so there are many ways to take it and then sort of go from there kind of thing and be creative. You can do all of that. Um, it's it's uh, never too early or too late. And this is a quote from uh, uh, Tom Davis, a Signature Healthcare. Uh, the chain, and he's director of spirituality. And so for him, he says, music and memory is a we weapon in the arsenal to fight for dignity, hope, and fulfillment in the lives of our elders. More than any other form of therapy, this program reconnects the individuals to a sense of self and well-being. It also works well in helping them become aware of inner life feelings and experiences to aid in completing end-of-life tasks and goals. Um, so we talked about our therapy connection. Um, Swallowing, peace. So you know, music and memory. A little bit about um, whatever next. Uh, let's see. Volunteers. I'm gonna go work backwards. On the website um, has a lot of information. You know how to get involved, or you know we we do offer training every month, um, and uh, sort of this uh, has that. Um, I'm just popping around. Um, everybody who's running music in memory gets to uh, gets access to a special website, and that website is uh, kind of bursting with resources. Uh, we have, you know, documents. We have uh, pre-made 
forms and marketing materials, all stuff so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, it's ready to go. We're just trying to make all this stuff really easy. We have like more than 25 very short videos, training videos, videos for families, uh, videos for staff, videos for nurses, um, just in terms of um, moving this along. You know, video is sort of that most powerful uh, medium. Uh, and the and we have an interactive forum, so we have you know thousands of um, um, professionals in long-term care uh, and other settings that all talk to each other. So you know, some places say, well, these are this is where everybody in Ohio is talking, or this is where the ONs are talking, or whatever, um, or by topic. It's you know all broken up uh, different ways. Uh, let me just see what we got here. Um, Tony, he's right here in. Uh, um, the dialysis, I mean, just makes a world of difference for him with uh, Keisha, uh, his the, the dialysis tech. Um, so a mother and daughter, and so families. So families, you know, they, they like when they see things going well, right? They like they like when people um, are responding, when the family members respond uh, in ways that they had lost before. Um, and so getting a little bit of that back um, is, um, you know, part of the, uh, part of the joy of this. So in terms of in one of the successful approaches and one of the things we're trying to do, you know, one of the difficulties I think is that um, healthcare settings are basically, maybe with the exception of hospitals, th there's relatively little community involvement and they're kind of avoided, right? So, you know, if somebody gets dementia and they're living at home, uh, well, family will stop to visit them and friends because they'll just be nervous and phobic and all that. Um, and then when somebody then goes from the from their home to any kind of residential care, that really seals the deal for a lot of people. Oh, they're being taken care of now. I really don't have to visit them. And so, you know, that's not that's not good. Um, and so, we're, Music and Memories really has a, a really a big effort um, to um, create large scale community involvement. Um, and so, we have the projects in Wisconsin and Texas. And in Wisconsin, right now, we have. Um, funding uh, to uh, get hundreds of uh, high schools involved with hundreds of nursing homes um, that we're sending um, high school chapters. Um, and we've spoken to 8,000 in Texas, 8,000 future health professionals at eight different conferences. And, and in Texas, where there are 1,200 or so nursing homes um, and thousands more assist living communities, um, we're really looking to um, really uh, can make connections here in a large way. We have schools of student nursing. Lamar University in Texas had its nursing students set up music and memory in a nursing home, loved it, and then told the other 90 schools of nursing in Texas, everybody's got to do this. So the Texas Student Nursing Association adopted music and memory. My point is, um, what is, you know, what does it take to bring in um, your community? You're already connected, many of you, with uh, your local colleges and universities and schools and um, and because you're small I don't know whether you're using volunteers or not you may not um, but this is this responds to the problem and this is a, a question that came up um, from uh, uh, Wes Wells um, and uh, it's an email that he wrote to Rachel I'm going to read uh, we're doing music and memory in our assisted living memory care and on a limited basis in the greenhouse homes now uh, that we're doing uh, more sh now that we're doing more short-term therapy in one house our biggest challenge is keeping up with adding new shuffles ipod shuffles for new move-ins um, and uh, getting their preferences their music preferences and, and getting the ipods programmed so what a lot of people do is they really um get a couple of students working in there um and uh, and helping you out um and or community people so this slide active seniors i mean they're the best volunteers people whose uh family member maybe had passed uh, or even have, um, you know, they have dementia now, but more likely it's often when they have more time later. Uh, and this is a great give back. They love it. They're dedicated. They understand uh, folks with this, in this condition. Um, and so that's a way to um, um, just amp it up um, a, a little bit. And, and it's really just, just so much, I think, in line with the sort of the greenhouse uh, way. Um, and this is just student volunteers. Gee, um, so many things are going on in the country. Um, and, um, you know, the students are really interested. They love it. This is not students sort of click, you know, checking off the box on they did 30 hours of service. Um, you know, students do this. And when they see themselves, you know, light up, I mean, which is the way I like to describe it, an elder, you know, they feel like, wow, I, I've just accomplished something more than I've accomplished in my life. Because, uh, you know, where do they have this? sort of 
uh, influence, I guess, you know, often. And so, I mean, that's a response. So it's a big confidence builder, and, uh, and they, they, um, they really uh, love it. And it's great for introducing them to healthcare where it's tough getting um, um, young people interested in, in um, uh, elder care um, as easily. And so we, we see a lot of kids, once they do this and they get the music and they get to meet the elders and they love the elders, and they say, I want to do this. Uh, and so it's just a great way to set up that progression. Um, okay, so bringing music and memory to your home, um, CMP grants. So uh, civil money, penalty money. So the states that have uh, um, really done these rollouts, um, they're using uh, money that is, uh, you know, comes from fines um, uh, issued by the health departments. Um, and uh, that money, those fines go to a bucket in CMS that come back to each state in the form of nursing home um, quality of life improvement for residents. Uh, and so for all of those of you who are fall into the skilled category. This does not apply to assisted living world. It does not apply to CCRCs um, unless there's a skilled component within, which there is, so I don't know. Uh, I'm not too sure on how that line divides, um, but but that's the money that they're using. And so states apply on behalf of many um, nursing homes, uh, but individual homes can apply also. It depends on the state. Politics are different in every state. The money availability, how easy it is to get. Uh, there's a lot of money out there uh, in terms of civil money penalty fund um, availability. Uh, whether you get access to it, whether you can find it, how much money is in your state in the bank, that's uh, can be more of a challenge. Uh, this is what you know, sort of uh, reality on the ground is. Um, and um, anyway, so that's. Um, I mean, there's a, um, a technical college in Tennessee. Uh, that they got funding for six nursing homes around it, uh, and they got it approved, and they got uh, not just 100 iPods for the students in the school to work with these six nursing homes. They got 100 iPods each for each of the nursing homes, and all the money they needed for music and um, and, uh, and and everything for the staff person. Um, so there's um, you know to give you an example of sort of there is flexibility there. Um, Community foundations are really just um, we found pretty pretty good place to go. They'll you know they're your community um, and um, you know music and memory is an easy sell um, basically. So um, we've had many community foundations uh, fund local um, homes um, and family and community donations. You know families very often will just sort of see this and say, "Oh, I'll pay for it." Oh, you only have ten people in the home. Great, you know I'll I'll do it after maybe they're loved one has had a great reaction. You know, how come everybody else doesn't have one? Yeah, you know, I mean, so cheap to get, or you can get donated iPods. It's really not an issue for you guys. You know, you do need a, a you know, set up, you know, an iTunes account on a computer, and then you have the iPods uh, or another um, MP3 device that'll work well. Um, our next step, well, we've been beta testing uh, tablets. I mean, who knew that you could use an iPad for someone with dementia? Um, and uh, well, you know, so. That's sort of been around for a while, um, and so that's why I haven't been rushing to sort of put it out there until we found sort of a, a, a solution that really worked well. I've been doing this for like six years, playing around with iPads, and we kind of have it down. We've done, we're just finishing up 16 nursing homes with a, funded by Verizon and Computer Consumer um, Consumer Technology Association, which is like 2,000 tech companies, funded us to do this. And, and as part of that, we made up a, you know a guide to using tablets for people with uh, um, Mobility impairments, uh, four guides, mobility impairments, hearing impairments, vision impairments, and cognitive. I said cognitive, mobility, hearing, uh, cognitive, and vision. Okay, and so we're, we're sort of finalizing that. But, you know, we're doing another sort of pilot in, the, in a few weeks. Uh, and then in January, we're going to sort of break it out. And, and I noticed that IN2L, you know, they're also, they just announced their sort of tablet solution they've been playing with. And I think this is great because uh, tablets offer a great opportunity to connect people and to give people access and help them function. So the more the merrier. Um, great, I'm, I guess, ready for questions. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Ooh, that's bad. Are you getting the same echo that I just did? No, well, not, I'm not. Okay, good. Um, thank you for all the wonderful information. And I think that there's um, a lot of exciting applications to greenhouse homes um, for those that are not already um, bringing personalized music into the homes. Um, and today we have um, 
the expert with us. So any questions that you have or any any comments, um, any things that you want to know logistically or the theory behind it, um, now's your chance. And please use the chat box on the side. Um, just type in your questions and um, we'll wait for a few minutes and let you get typed in and then um, we can answer them. Do I see the chat box? Yes, comments. Let's see, Cheryl or David and Twyla, Elizabeth Barnes, Aaron, Andrew Hawthorne, Heather, Cassandra, Italia, Lisa, Lynette, Marcia. Oh, and Nina and Andrea. Anybody going once, going twice? I mean, I know there there are always lots of questions, and uh, you know, I, I know the questions are there, and so this is just it is a uh, good time to ask. I mean, all the questions are good. I mean, because I don't cover everything, I talk a lot, but there's always so much, so much more. Um, is it possible to um, to share your presentation? We will send out a recording of the presentation. Sure. Um, but um, Dan, thank you. You could just uh, e email that to me, and I can make sure to get that out to the folks that are on the call. Okay, no problem. Awesome. All right. I hear that iTunes will no longer be supporting iPod shuffles. That's true. iPod shuffles and um, um, and nanos. They in, on July 27th they discontinued both, um, but we've been working with Apple and so far we've been getting you know whatever we've needed um, on existing inventory um, and it remains. You can't get it by going to your local store. Um, there's only only sort of through music and memory can people get them. Um, and um, but we're looking at if if you know once Apple runs out of their inventory, um, you know we'll have another device, you know, sort of ready to go and recommended. And um, so it's, you know, we'll still be using iTunes. We'll just have another device at the end of it. So it's, uh, you know, we're all about the giving people their music and the device is not, you know, th there are multiple ways to um, multiple devices we can use to make that happen. Hmm. So that leads into the next question. Is it better to use an iPod than, a, than using a tablet? Well, that's a good question. You know, an iPod is, you know, like a shuffle is small. And that's so, you know, so it's very easy. It's easy to use. You know, you can clip it to someone's back of someone's shirt. The wires go behind their ears and down the back and it's not in the way. And, you know, so they have the headphones on and they're good. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a tablet is big um, and people, you know, often need to have someone with them working the tablet. You know, it kind of depends on on how to do it. Um, what's nice in a, in a greenhouse environment, it's small, so you're not worried about, I mean, in large uh, large organizations, you're always worried about somebody stealing a tablet, um, but that's not gonna be your issue. So um, tablets, are, you know, tablets are fine. I mean, you can use them, just, you know, somebody just needs to figure out just how, and it's only one person at a time, right? So if you have one tablet, and you're sharing it, and, and three people, we want to listen to music at the same time, um, and, uh, you know, then you can't do that. So um, that's, you know, you can have a comedy. To me, the best is a combination of having kind of both. Um, to me, every, I mean, I would typically, I've always said every nursing home should have at least three tablets. Um, yours is, you know, in terms of size, you know, just having one with just that rich, you know, it's a rich portal onto just so many things. Um, and, uh, you know, wherever a person is at in terms of their cognition uh, or their background, is just like, it's, you know, it's like when we used to, you know, when young going to the library and it's, just fun being there because there's so much, and and that's what it is. It's kind of like the library coming to them, um, and like everything is there. What have been the best affordable headphones you suggest? So we have um, these are Cas headphones um, that are um, um, under three dollars uh, and they're throwaway for hygiene purposes. So 
um, we, we buy them in bulk and we, everybody gets the same, you know, when any, any um, site becomes music in memory, they get all the same discounts and sort of like the music in memory wide discount and connections with the vendors directly to buy. And would you recommend any other devices besides iPod shuffles that assist folks with dementia? So we're, we're waiting, we're not sort of, we, we know, we pretty much know what we're doing, but we're sort of waiting till we sort of prepare sort of a rollout of the next device. Um, so I guess to be determined or to be announced. Okay. All right, let's see. The hurricane in Florida helped us be aware that iPods work when electricity and cell and computers go down. Yay, music and memory. <laughs> well, I'd really, I'd love to, is that based on an experience or a story that somebody heard? This is from David and Twyla Hahn, who just went through Hurricane Irma in Florida. And hold on, let me, I think you're unmuted, David. Um, so if you want to share. This is Twyla Hahn at John Knox Village in Pompano Beach, Florida. We've been trying to get the program started for several years, and we do have uh, 25, and we have a few that are working. We want to work with you, Dan, and bring it to Florida statewide if possible, but certainly at John Knox Village. And we do have new uh, administration in terms of the staff member that you had trained, Eric, is now gone. So we want to reconnect. And we hope you're coming to the uh, Greenhouse Conference in Fort Lauderdale and we can work together. Well, unfortunately, I won't be there, but I'd be glad to, you know, schedule time to talk. Very good. We'll work on that. Okay, super. Love that. That's a great story. I'm, I'm, I, was, I was wondering <laughs> about that. But, it, well, you know, I, I thought about it the other way. I thought about it the water. I was, I was really hoping that people had their computers backed up. And because if you lose all your music and your playlist, that's a big problem. So this was sort of, um, I, I referenced this when I did my last training and um, that, uh, you know, just you know, another perspective. <laughs> um, and I'd, I'd love to figure out also, and wherever it could benefit, you know, whether, you know, I mean, we could uh, get iPods donated and, and help to, you know, when they run out of juice, I mean, if it's Puerto Rico, I mean, right now, right, so people have, they have no power, no way to, if they had an iPod, they have no way to recharge it. Um, and uh, just trying to, if anybody comes up with an idea that's a, a kind of like a, a, a public initiative to um, uh, reach elders where they are just sitting around again, doing nothing all day, like truly, no TV, because there is no electric. So I can't imagine what all those folks with dementia on the islands are going through now and what it means for them on just so many levels. But this is just one mm -hmm. small, very small thing we might do for them because, I mean, yeah. I mean, to me, it's just like going into the emergency room. If you have dementia, you are, uh, you know, you're going to sit there for hours and hours and you freak out and become delirious. And, you know, it's not, not, a, not a good process. And so mm -hmm. we actually want to change, change that in hospitals. And, oh, and I didn't talk about, well, moving back and forth between the hospitals and, uh, you know, we talked about people coming um, to you with their playlists done, but when you uh, discharge someone or someone goes in the middle of the night to the hospital, what's good, you know, and they had a great experience with the music, uh, and they have a heart issue, they leave, they're, you know, tied down to the gurney and they're off and gone. Well, now they're living without that music and what's going to happen to them when they're in the hospital for a week. Um, and, uh, you know, and then if they go to a hospice after that, and there's no music, there's no communication, no way to, I mean, the total, you know, real difference in what happens to them. Um, and uh, so, you know, working with the largest public hospital systems in both Australia and the U.S. and uh, New York City, there are 10 major hospitals as part of the health system here. Um, and they're using it for, yes, for their elders, they're using it for behavioral health, they're using it in rehab. I didn't even talk about rehab. Um, but um, anyway, long answer. That's cool. And I mean, it's really good to know I mean, that the, this could be like, a multi-day course. There's so much good information and outcomes and statistics and experiences. Um, the last comment is from um, Erin and she says, thank you so much for this information. I absolutely love the documentary Alive Inside. Also very helpful. I would love to know some more resources for statistics in the effects of music on memory. Can she find them on the website? Um, you know, there's there is a research, but it's it's not really updated. But well, once we, we we all of this is available in the care community of all the research, all the stats. Um, I I can certainly send you. I'll send it to Rachel along with the PowerPoint, and I'll send both the the Brown study, 
um, and the that International Journal of Rehab. Uh, those are sort of the two quick and dirty, really good um, uh, uh, research pieces, and that'll give you, you know, just good stuff you can show people. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll send that to all those, those three things to Rachel, and then she can send it around. Excellent. All right, Dan. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it, and this has just been very enlightening and um, and interesting. Well, thank you for having me. It's really my honor. You guys are my heroes. <laughs> oh, we'll definitely be in touch. I foresee a bright future together. Okay, great. Thanks. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye, right. everybody. Don't forget to register for the conference. Last minute plug. <laughs>